Good evening and welcome to another Numismatic Notes with Benjamin. I confess that this is a rare take too. I just made too many clumsy errors in my pronunciation in the first video and I apologize for that. Tonight I'm bringing to you a China 50 Yuan of 2019. It is um, a blue, green, brown, and orange note and it measures 150 by 70 millimeters. Neither the standard catalog of world paper money or the bank notebook have assigned numbers to this new issue. I did go to Wikipedia to find more information out about things depicted on this note. On the face, in the upper left-hand corner, we have the arms of the nation uh, appearing above a watermark of Mao Zedong. Mao Zedong also appears on the other end of the note, along with his birth year of 1893 and his death year of 1976. In the center of the note, you can see, I'm sorry, in the bottom left-hand corner of the note, you can see that the digits 5 and 0 are used as an offset register, which means when you hold the note up to the light, there is um, missing sections of this 5 and the 0 that will make it appear as a complete 50. There is also a big 50 in the center of the note that shifts color from green to blue. It, um, depending on the angle of shift, you can also see the light band rise or lower as the note shifts. Let's see if I can show you that feature. Do you see how the light rises or lowers depending on how you hold the note? Do you see that light band? Yeah, it's mesmerizing. I could do this for hours. Oh my gosh, I hope I don't have to do that for hours. It's hypnotic. But it's a, it's a neat modern, um anti-counterfeiting device. There is also, to the right, a pink security thread that will shift to green, and there is a yuan symbol and a 50 that appear to the right. Let's see if we can get it to shift to. I am not seeing the shift to green, but I am seeing the shift from like pink to orange. It could be the strange lighting I have in my room, but it's truly an interesting note. Um, there is also a, another security thread that runs through the Central 50. It's not easy to see on the note, but when you have it held up to the light or placed on a light box, you can see uh, 50 um, uh, right side up and upside down, all the way up and down the length of the, of the strip. The serial numbers are pretty interesting because there are horizontal and vertical serial numbers. And on the horizontal number, you see a combination of red and black numerals and on some banknotes of china you can even see the shift of color in the middle of one of the digits it'll shift from one color to the next it's pretty interesting the horizontal note over here on the other end of the i'm sorry the horizontal oh my gosh y'all you'd never guess i was a teacher the vertical serial number on the right is uh in the color blue <laughs> there are some tactile marks here in the bottom corner and i imagine they're different on each of the modern notes to help those who are visually handicapped be able to differentiate between the denominations. If we go back over to the watermark, you can see a scattering of Omron rings or donuts or like sometimes in the U.S., um, little dots that are called champagne bubbles. But they're a part of the Orion constellation, which is a feature that disallows modern copy machines um, from making a photocopy in color of these images. In fact, um, even a black and white copier might sometimes be switched off and refuse to, to work with the placement of these Omron rings. Now, uh, let's... Let's discuss the gentleman on the right end of the note. Mao Zedong became leader of China when his forces defeated the nationalists in 1949. Among the things that Mao Zedong did, created the first constitution for China. He was behind the Great Leap Forward of 1958 um, that killed between 20 and 46 million of his own people um, as he tried to bring the nation from an agrarian culture to a mechanized and modern manufacturing culture. Uh, it may not have been completely his fault. He had a lot of people who had a vested interest in telling him what he wanted to hear and um, may have inflated a lot of uh, reports from the countryside. China still exported a lot of their crops at this time, to the misfortune of his people, and that might explain the large number of people that died. Um, in 1966, 
he helped, um, or he had things to do with the Cultural Revolution as well, which saw widespread destruction of cultural artifacts, a violent class struggle, and also elevated his cult of personality. I wonder how he would feel all these years later to realize that he is now part of the culture. So uh, it would be unfortunate indeed if there was ever another revolution, because now that he's part of the culture, what would the Chinese destroy now? Uh, but, you know, I don't want to be too political here. Um, he suffered heart attacks and died at the age of 1982 and 1976. Prior to his death, he did open the West and famously hosted President Nixon of the United States in a state visit. And to be fair, Mao is at least as well thought of as he is despised. History may still be too fresh for full objectivity of everything that was done by him or in his name. But one of the interesting things I discovered that make me look at the man in a more benign way, in a, a way I choose to look at him, is the fact that he was considered a master calligrapher. I have appreciated handwriting my whole life. As a lefty, I was told I had terrible handwriting. My teachers made me do my work over and over again, and I think some of them even laughed at you know my misery. But I determined that I was going to have good handwriting, and as an adult... I'm pleased to say I've been hired to um, address envelopes for weddings, and I am known for my handwriting. So it pleased me to discover that not only did Mao Zedong study uh, Chinese characters so well that he was considered a master, he developed his own style, and his, his calligraphy can be seen um, from top to bottom, left to right, all over the nation of China. In fact, students can study calligraphy and specifically study a Mao style of calligraphy. Let's see what's going on on the back of this beautiful banknote. Take a second to drink in that view, won't you? In the upper right-hand corner, we have English, Chinese, Mongolian. We have lots of languages, and I regret that in my research I didn't bother to find out the languages that are shown on the corner of this note. I do apologize for that. I was swept away by the beauty of the central vignette, which is the Patala Palace in the city of Lhasa in Tibet, which is argued to be um, a historic nation that was taken over by the Chinese, or has always been a region of China. So um, I don't want to be political there. I just know it's a beautiful building. This uh, palace is actually a style of architecture called a Zhong Fortress. And I don't know if I said that right because I do not speak Tibetan, nor do I speak Bhutanese, where this style of architecture is also found, nor do I speak University of Texan, because this style of architecture is also found on the campus of the University of Texas in the city of El Paso. It's a very striking and unique style of architecture. This palace served as the winter palace for the Dalai Lama for hundreds of years. In fact, from 1649 to the Dalai Lama's fleeing um, of Tibet for India in 1959, this served as the winter palace. The other palace used by the Dalai Lama was just three miles away, so perhaps the movement had more to do with times of year. The Dalai Lama's in certain palaces, and that's how the people knew the time, or or what, because I can't imagine that three miles makes too much of a difference in the winter and the summer seasons. Uh, the palace was named after Mount Potalaka, and it was only through the personal intervention of Chow and Lei that Peak Potalapa escaped damage, or I'm sorry, Peak Potala escaped damage during the Cultural Revolution that wrecked havoc on so much of China's uh, historic architecture. It has been um, on UNESCO's World Heritage List since 1994. On the note, you can see that uh, the engraving of the palace is a solid color, except for this uh, colorful portion right here in the very middle, which is uh, called the Red Palace, but seems to be indicated by a brown color. This is a beautiful, amazing historic note. It is accessible to even the newest collector. I didn't pay a great deal for this note. Collectors of world leaders, China, Tibet, palaces, castles... 
moles, <laughs> and the Dalai Lama will want this note for their collection. Uh, please subscribe by clicking on the purple circle, like, and comment on my YouTube channel, Numismatic Notes with Benjamin. I am Benjamin. Have a jewel of a day.